Polsko Pomorska Szkoła. My naszym widzom, uczniom przypominamy, że możecie subskrypować nasze kanały na Facebooku, a także na YouTube. Zachęcamy również do komentowania i czynnego brania udziału w naszych lekcjach. W naszym studiu jest już pan Maciej Doksa. To oznacza kolejną lekcję języka angielskiego skierowaną do uczniów szkół średnich. Panie Macieju, co tematem dzisiejszych rozważań? Dzisiaj będziemy mówić o poważnych sprawach państwo i społeczeństwo. Good afternoon, students. So, as I said before, today we are going to talk about a serious matter or serious matters about the state and about the society. What is the state? Well, as you can see, as the title uh, shows, the state means państwo, the society, społeczeństwo. Uh, so, first of all, maybe let me explain the word state, because actually uh, when we say the word państwo, the first word that comes uh, to our mind, the first English word that comes to our mind is uh, the country. Yes, we have different countries, Poland, Germany, um, Norway, and so on and so on. So what is the difference between the state and the, um, the word country? Well, actually, the state, sometimes it can be the same. It can mean the same as uh, the word country. So, for example, when you say Baltic states or the Baltic states, uh, it is the same as the Baltic countries, yes, or the Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, uh, these are the Baltic states or mm, Baltic countries. But the state is also the whole organization of a country, so the government and all its institutions, czyli to jest państwo w sensie organizacji państwowej, instytucji państwowych, rządu, tego co tworzy państwo właśnie w sensie organizacji. Society, społeczeństwo, uh, that's clear. All right, so of course the subject of the state and the society is very, very broad, it's very big. Today we are just going to talk about the most important things, the most important words uh, that you may find uh, useful. First of all, let's talk about the government. What is the government? Well, government means rząd. Uh, there are different types of government in the world, there are different uh, people involved in the government, so let's take a look at them. The first word, probably the easiest because it's a uh, kind of international word, is the president. Uh, almost in every country, not in every country, but almost in every country there is uh, the president. However, you have to remember that in different countries the presidents have different role. For example, uh, the president of Poland is not the same as the president of the United States, does not have the same role. Uh, because, for example, the US president, so the, uh, the president of the United States, uh, is actually uh, the prime minister of this country, prime minister, czyli premier. So he is actually the boss of the government. Uh, he actually runs the uh, state, the country, all the organizations. Yes, so he is the kind of executive officer, czyli taki uh, wykonawczy, jakby zarządca całego kraju. Uh, in Poland, we have a different system. Uh, we have both the president and the prime minister, and they have totally different roles. I mean, day-to-day -day, uh, governing and running of the government of the state, this is the prime minister's role. The president uh, has other roles which are also important, but he is not uh, involved in everyday, you know, government of the country. Czyli, tak jak powiedziałem, prime minister to jest premier. You also have people who make the laws. These are called members of parliament. 
parliament, wiadomo, parliament, members of parliament, członkowie parlamentu, uh, very often, especially in the British English, they are called MPs. He is an MP from my city, for example. Yes, MPs, czyli posłowie. Uh, now, of course, in different countries, uh, they can have different parliamentary system um, and also the members of parliament can be called different names. For example, in uh, the United States you have uh, representatives who are members of the House of Representatives, czyli Izby Reprezentantów, uh, and these are like uh, members of parliament in Poland, czyli posłowie, uh, but you also have senators which are members of the Senate. So, as I said, um, in different countries, uh, MPs are called different names. But generally, if you say member of parliament, everybody will understand this because this is quite universal expression. Uh, then you have ministries. You have ministers, so people who are on top of ministries. Ministry, czyli ministerstwo. You can have the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Industry, uh, the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, and so on and so on. Again, in most countries, in most countries, uh, the word ministry is, well, used, or words which are very similar to this. However, in America, again, they have totally different name. They don't use the word ministry, they use the word department. So you have different departments. These are American ministries. So, for example, you have Department of State, czyli Departament Stanu, czyli z grubsza Ministerstwo Spraw Wewnętrznych, myślę. Uh, now, as I said, you have the word the state. Well, generally, the state means państwo, jako organizacja państwowa. But you have to be careful, because in some countries the state can also mean like a region, a piece of the country, uh, one administrative district. For example, again, in the United States. United States is divided into 50 regions, quite independent uh, in many ways, and these regions are called the states. That's why uh, we call this nation uh, the United States of America, czyli wtedy state oznacza stan, na przykład um, stan uh, Washington, czy stan, um, nie wiem, Idaho, czy Arkansas, i tak dalej, i tak dalej. Now, when you have the states, uh, there is usually, not usually, in America, in every state, there is a representative of the government who has some power in this state. Uh, he represents the, go the government, the central government there. He doesn't uh, have, uh, he or she, or they don't have uh, total power, but they have some powers. In uh, America, they are called governor, which is translated as gubernator. However, in Poland, we also have a governor, uh, who is also the representative of the um, government, but the governor in Polish is called Wojewoda, yes, and he represents the government. He is not chosen by uh, the people from this state, he is just nominated, appointed by, uh, the, I guess, by the prime minister or uh, somebody like that. All right, now let's talk about the law a little bit, because the law or the judicial system, czyli system sądowniczy, is uh, one of the three main powers. Yes, we have the president uh, <coughs> or prime minister and the government. We have the parliament, which is responsible for the legislation, for making new laws, and we have uh, the law, the legal system, the judicial system, which decides about the law. Now, the highest court in the country is called the Supreme Court. Supreme means the highest, the best, the most important. Po polsku to jest sąd najwyższy, 
I think almost in every country there is this Supreme Court. So this is, uh, you know, the highest court which uh, decides, uh, which has the last word in some uh, legal cases. Of course, uh, <clears throat> the basic, one of the basic uh, people who are involved in the legal system, in the law, is a judge. We have judges who decide if somebody is guilty or not guilty, really senja. Uh, the judge usually, not always, but usually uh, sits in a trial. What's a trial? Well, a trial is this kind of procedure, formal, very formal procedure, when you have, uh, or when the judge has to decide if somebody is guilty or not guilty trial process so during the trial the judge uh, well let's say presides or runs the trial and then uh, they decide whether the person is guilty or not guilty in America it's a little bit different it's not the judge who decides uh, that somebody is guilty or not it is the jury so people uh, common people members of society uh, they can decide if somebody is guilty or not and the judge will only decide if the person is guilty the judge will only decide about the punishment so what form of punishment and how um, severe the punishment will be now <clears throat> when you are on trial it means that you have been charged with something or accused of something these words mean more or less the same, not exactly the same. To be charged with something or to be accused of something means być czy zostać o coś oskarżonym. You can use both of these expressions, but there is some small difference. To be charged with means that you are formally charged with uh, some crime by a prosecutor, czyli prokurator. To be charged with some, something means zostać formalnie oskarżonym przez prokuraturę, tak? Czyli e, tak zwany e, akt oskarżenia został wniesiony e, przeciwko tobie. To be accused of, well, it can mean the same as to be charged with, but to be accused of is also used in normal life. I don't know, you can accuse your little brother of uh, breaking your bicycle or breaking your uh, mobile phone, yes? So, uh, be accused uh, is more common word in um, normal daily life. To be charged with, it's uh, very formal. It is done by uh, the legal system. Now, when you are on trial and uh, there is a lot of evidence that you have committed the crime, that you are guilty, then we say that you are found guilty. To be found guilty, zostać uznanym za winnego. He was found guilty, yes? So he was tried, no, first you can say that he was charged with, for example, vandalism. And then he was tried, and then in the end he was found guilty. However, if there is evidence, the vody, which clearly shows that you are not guilty, that you didn't do it, you will not be found guilty, you will be acquitted. To be acquitted means that you are free to go, that you will not be punished, that you are innocent. To be acquitted oznacza zostać uniewinnionym, w sensie sądowym, takim właśnie formalnym. So it's the opposite of being found guilty. You can be found guilty. He was found guilty. No, he was acquitted. If you are found guilty, and it's something serious, you have committed a serious crime, well, you can be sentenced to prison sentenced to czyli skazany na you can be sentenced to five years of prison you can be sentenced of, to one month of prison and so on and so on czyli to be sentenced to something zostać skazanym na jakąś karę na ileś lat na przykład więzienia all right what are the people involved in the political system in the society in the government of course, there are many different people involved with many different functions. Uh, we will just talk about the most important of them, the most common um, of them. First of all, politician. 
uh, politicians are people that we love to hate um, because uh, very often they're not very nice people. However, it depends. Uh, politician. Uh, the next word is quite interesting. Mayor. Well, in Poland, this person in the Polish language is usually called president or burmistrz. President miasta lub burmistrz miasta. In English, there is basically always one name, a mayor. In Poland, there is a difference between burmistrz and president. It depends how big the city or the town is. If it is a city with the population above 100,000 people, in Polish we say president. If it's below or less than 100,000 people, we say burmistrz. However, in English, uh, there is no such difference. Uh, both these people will be called mayor. Czyli prezydent Torunia to the mayor of Torun, a nie the president of Torun. So we have mayors running the cities. Another person who is involved in the political system, uh, not very often, usually every four or five years, uh, or sometimes more often, it depends on the electoral system, is a voter. Most of us are voters. If you are 18 and you have all the rights, you can be a voter. So you can go and vote for the president, for the members of parliament, for the mayor of your city, and so on and so on. Czyli voter to jest wyborca, głosujący wyborca. Voters are very important. Voters are us. We have the power. We just need to go and vote. Another name for a person who is involved in the life of the state, of the society, is a citizen. Citizen is a person who lives in a country and belongs to this country and has the nationality and all the rights uh, of this country, czyli obywatel. So we are the citizens of Poland. Uh, people who live in America usually, but not always, are the citizens of the United States, and so on and so on. Now, uh, another group of very important people are residents or inhabitants. Well, in English it's basically the same thing. It's a person who lives in some place, some particular place, czyli mieszkaniec, residents of Toruń, inhabitants of Kujawia and Pomerania, yes, and so on and so on. Well, the last word I would like to talk about, uh, the last type of person, is quite interesting. Uh, in Poland, we don't usually talk much about these people, but they are very, very uh, often talked about, for example, in America. Lobbyists. Who is a lobbyist? Well, in Polish, the name is quite similar. Lobbysta. Who is it? Well, it's usually a person who works for some group of people. It can be, for example, some uh, type of business uh, or group of companies or some group of people, for example, for farmers, or for producers of alcohol, or for, uh, I don't know, producers of some medicines, yes, uh, and so on and so on. And these people go to talk with the politicians, with members of parliament, with uh, government officials. They go and they try to convince or persuade members of parliament or government officials that they should make such a decision or such a decision or another decision which basically this decision will be good for this group of people or business that supports them. Yes, Of course, they have to do it legally, so they just have to go and talk present arguments, presents, uh, I mean, sh to, to say, to show why such decisions should be taken, why, for example, the law should be changed or new law introduced. They have to say that it's good, it will be good for everybody or it will be good for these people, but everybody will benefit. Of course, <laughs> this is just theory, yes, very often uh, lobbyism is not that uh, legal. Uh, they don't only use uh, arguments, you know, words and so on and so on. Uh, but this is a lobbyist. 
lobbies are very important because they, if they are very effective, they can uh, make changes in the law. Yes, they can make changes in regulations and so on and so on. Now, the next um, <coughs> area of interest uh, when we talk about the state is the territory of a country. Well, the territory of a country is usually divided in some smaller parts, smaller units, regions. They have different names. So, for example, you can have a province. What's a province? Well, provincia, w sensie, stan, województwo, uh, something like that. Yeah, so this is a province. Province usually doesn't mean uh, what we say provincia czyli wieś. No, the province just means a large area, a large part of the country, which is like one administrative region. Yes, so uh, as I said, województwo, provincia, uh, jakiś stan, territorium. Region, czyli region, a similar word to the province. State, czyli stan, in those countries where there are states, znowu stan to mniej więcej to samo, co po w języku polskim województwo. The Polish word województwo has an English equivalent. So there is actually a word in English which means województwo in Poland. But this word is wojewodship. However, this word is a little bit, I would say, artificial. So what does it mean? It means that uh, not many people in America or in England will know what it is if you ask them. If, you, if they have been to Poland, if they have had some contact with Poland, if they know something about Poland, then they will maybe know that voivodeship is actually a state, a region or a province. But if they have lived all their life in America, in uh, Great Britain or somewhere else in the world and they have never had contact with Poland, they will probably never know what voivodeship means. Then you have to use the word province or region. Uh, the next word, uh, there is a mistake, actually. I don't know why, probably the computer uh, changed this, so let me just correct it because I don't want this mistake to stay there. So the word, yes, the word is not a country, but county. What's a county? Well, county is a smaller unit of administration than a province, region, state or voivodeship. So this is something like in Polish we have powiat, yes? So it's just like small region. So every voivodeship is divided in a few powiats. In English it's a county and we usually translate it as hrabstwo. So you have counties in Great Britain, you have counties in America, czyli tak zwane hrabstwa, które odpowiadają, tak jak powiedziałem, naszym powiatom. Border or boundary. Granica. Obydwa słowa znaczą te, to samo. So both border and boundary can mean granica. However, uh, in some context you only use the word uh, border. For example, przekraczać granicę, you use the word border, you cross the border. Uh, na granicy, at the border. Granica pomiędzy Polską a Niemcami, border between. Okay? But when you say about the whole line around some area, we can say border but also a boundary. A district. You have a city like Toruń, and the city is also divided in some parts, like you know, Rubinkovo, Wrzosy, Starówka, Bydgoskie, Mokre. This is called a district, czyli dzielnica, district. Uh, also, a city is divided even into smaller parts. We call them neighborhood, czyli okolica, sąsiedztwo. You can call it a block. What's a block? Well, of course, a block can mean blocks of flats, but also a block means an area between four streets. Czyli taki, no, można powiedzieć trochę kwartał, kiedyś się chyba tak mówiło, czyli taki obszar pomiędzy jakby czterema ulicami, od przecznicy do przecznicy i z drugiej strony też od przecznicy do przecznicy. So we call it a block, yes? So I usually play with the kids uh, from the block, yeah? so from our little neighborhood. And an estate. What's an estate? Well, an estate or housing estate is a uh, one area with buildings where people live. So, for example, like in Torin, it would be Rubinkovo, czyli uh, osiedle mieszkaniowe. It's an estate. Okay, and last but not least, the actions that people can do 
connected with politics, the state, the society. You can vote, głosować. When you vote, you usually elect somebody, a president, a member of parliament, a mayor, czyli wybrać kogoś. Members of parliament can pass a new law, czyli uchwalić nowe prawo, nową ustawę. You can they can introduce a new law, czyli wprowadzić nowe prawo. They can pass or introduce new regulations, czyli nowe przepisy. Very often, they also impose taxes, impose a tax, nałożyć podatek, uh, narzucić podatek. Uh, when people are not happy with the government, for example, because the government passes uh, bad regulations or imposes too high taxes, well, then people organize or hold demonstrations, czyli organizować demonstracje. You can use both words, organize or hold and then they will oppose the government during these demonstrations. They say, no, 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 we don't want that, yes, go away, please, uh, change the law, we don't agree with this. And I previously talked about lobbyists, what do they do? They lobby, so they try to convince politicians to change the law. All right, I think uh, I have uh, explained, well, maybe a small fraction of the whole subject of state and society, but uh, I hope that this vocabulary will also help you uh, to talk a little bit more uh, fluently about these things. So thank you very much and goodbye.